Ready to go? Five, four, three, two, one. This is Staff Gymnasium, home of your Brockton Boxers. And today, it's senior night here at Staff Gymnasium to honor all of the Brockton Boxers for their dedicated four years of service. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partners, Jen Happy Feet Caruso and Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, first and foremost, doesn't get bigger than eight versus nine in the state rankings. No, it doesn't. And it's, gonna be, it's a big game for the boxers, Lady Boxers because it's senior night. And congratulations to all the seniors and best wishes to whatever their their trails might be, but their journey might be. But the boxers, lady boxers, are gonna have to really pick it up again, be, unfortunately, because of uh, Miss Fairhurst being out of the lineup. So the bench really has to step up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's senior night. I understand that um, emotions are kind of going, and some are sad, some are happy, but they need to come out and play this game hard and just go out with a bang. Now, Arlington Catholic, the Cougars, are one of Brockton's six losses on the air, guys. That is huge coming into the last game. Brockton, of course, already wrapping up a playoff berth by virtue of winning the Big Three division. They're looking to make a deep playoff run. This might be a potential championship matchup. Yeah, this definitely could. I mean, I've talked to a few of the girls, um, if I'm not mistaken, last time when they played them. They did lose to them, correct? Yes. Yes. So they, I think they're going to come out hard today and definitely show them what they're made of. We're here, home court advantage, so we're really going to see what, what they can do. Meanwhile, Arlington Catholic scoring first. 2-0 to nothing the score, 7.20 to go in the first period. The Cougars coming in with a record of 16-5. and five going against Brockton's 13 and 6. I think what Brockton has to do, Matt, is they have to get the ball up very quickly. Hopefully a transition game is working to uh, offset the big girl in the middle for Arlington Catholic, number 50. Nice shot. Jelani Jackson with the big three from way downtown. Brockton takes their first lead of the game. You can see Brockton's playing a 3-2-1-2 two, two zone. Marie Gaffney, number 22 with a three, no good. That was Melissa Rogers. Now Jelani Jackson up to Natasha Elias. Elias all the way in. And an offensive foul called. I think the problem in this game will be the height of number 50 on Arlington Catholic. Demiana Fogarty. Yes, that might Easily be Easily six feet tall. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that, that foul was called on Brito, um, a block, a blocking foul. Ball mm -hmm. hits a three for the Cougars. Five to three, the score, six minutes to go. Yeah, the Cougars are known for shooting the outside shot. So Brockton might have to really D up when the outside shooter takes that shot. Outside to Giannisha Silva Moore. Moore to Jelani Jackson. Jackson, the only non senior on the floor. Brings it in, puts it up, a couple of bounces off the rim and in. That was a, um, that was a tough shot. I, I, I was going to say I really wouldn't advise it, but she put it up there and the um, bounce was in her favor. Good defense by um, Lewis. Definitely. I think we see a pickup in energy from the boxers right now. Yeah, especially your seniors, and hopefully the uh, lady box, because lady boxers seniors will pick up like the like the um, boxers um, of the boys team picked up on senior night and upset uh, Cambridge, excuse me, Catholic Memorial. Natasha Elias called for the armbar now two team fouls against Brockton. Alexandra Ball to Marie Gaffney. Gaffney back to Ball. Down low for Melissa Rogers. Rogers cross to Gaffney. Her shot is blocked by Catherine Lewis and a jump ball called. You know, they really need to be careful with fouls in this game because I know against Arlington Catholic last time, Catherine Lewis got fouled out. So they definitely need to be careful of that and look to change that in this game going forward. Jelani Jackson 
did not play last game here at Staff Gymnasium due to an ankle injury. Silvermore down low for Brito. Brito kicks it out to Catherine Lewis. Lewis for three, no good. Silvermore with the offensive board. Nice rebound by uh, Silvermore. Jelani Jackson gets her shot blocked by Fogarty. Arlington Catholic having some troubles. And it goes out of bounds. Now th that was a great defensive play by Silva Moore. She, she with her hands up over here on the other side of the court, caused the passer to make a, a tough pass down there to the uh, to the Arlington teammate, which in turn chain reaction and it's Brockton's ball. And we have an injured Cougar, the player that was fighting for the ball. That is number ten, Alexandra Ball. And one thing I like, Matt, early on in this ball game, the lady boxers are keeping their hands up. They have to keep their hands up, make Arlington work for that pass to their teammate. Keep your hands up, you make things happen out there. Ball being attended to by athletic trainer Jerry Connors. Down low on the baseline. She and Gina Silvermore kind of went down hard fighting for that ball to keep it in bounds. She gets up and walks to the bench. Might have bit her tongue. She, she kind of grabbed at her mouth a little bit. Yeah, I think I see some blood. Julia. Number 14, Julia Matera coming into the game to replace ball. Is bleeding from her mouth. Four and a half minutes to go, five to five the score. Jelani Jackson for Catherine Lewis. Lewis to Brito. Brito gets stuffed. It's a hard fall. And we saw Aliyah Brito come out of last game with a knee injury as well. So injury is definitely a big part of the last couple of games for the Brockton Boxers. Lonnie Jackson to Natasha Elias. Elias way downtown, a little bit short. Arlington Catholic gets the rebound. Ooh, almost looked like a carry. Gaffney to Matera. Matera inside for number 20, who puts it off the glass and in. Monica Royo. Nice passing by the Cougars. Jackson holding. Hands it to Gianisha Silva Moore. Moore back to Jackson. Jackson thought shot, now Catherine Lewis. Driving the lane, she is fouled. Armbar and handcheck called on Melissa Rogers for the Cougars. And Isn't that a new rule this year? Yes. The, the check is the, che yeah. the, the new rule. Lewis to Brito. Brito driving has her. The ball swatted out of her hand, but it went to Giannisha Silvermore. Now Jelani Jackson has it. Jackson driving, puts it high off the glass and in. That's a good take. Wow, that was the second tough shot she has made going to the basket. Excellent job by Jackson. Defensive rebound by Giannisha Silvermore. She gets hit down, no whistle, and gets the ball to Natasha Elias. Yeah, I think she slipped. Silva Moore driving, kicks it out to Natasha Elias for three. Good. It's good. And a timeout called by the head coach of Arlington Catholic. That's a big time shot. That is a big time shot. And I think they saw it coming. I mean, Natasha's been looking for that shot for good majority of this first quarter. So once it gets kicked out to her, she's going to take it. You can tell the intensity in the Lady Boxers' eyes that they they really determined to try to come out of here with the win on senior night. Brockton, of course, being the eighth-ranked team in the state. Arlington Catholic, the ninth. Of course, number seven, Springfield Central, defeated the Brockton Boxers. Three of their six losses have come to the Springfield Central team. Arlington Catholic, 
only one of the losses, trying to avenge that loss and take a big victory here on Senior Night into the playoffs. And Jen, as an experienced athlete in both regular season and the playoffs, what does a big victory do here on Senior Night going into the playoffs? What does that do as far as the, the team spirit going into the playoffs? Honestly, it's needed a lot because coming off of a loss in any game is is rough and coming off a loss in senior night is even worse i mean i came off a loss in senior night going into the playoffs and kind of put us behind the eight ball going in when we played braintree we did come out on top but it was a little tougher to get back into it with this if they win this game i think their confidence level will be extremely high and that's what the lady boxers need Definitely have the talent and the shooting prowess up 10 to 7 now over the Arlington Catholic Cougars. What a long passing by the Cougars leads to a shot by Monica Royo. No good. Gaffney loses the ball. Royo keeps it in bounds, but into the hands of Giannisha Silvermore. Nice so job. Driving. Breaks the D and puts it drive. up and in. And that's exactly what they have to do. Push the ball up, keep the big man out of the play. Alexandra Ball back in the game is fouled. Push called on Catherine Lewis. And yeah, that's Lewis's first foul. And like you said, Jen, she has to stay out of foul trouble. She does. She plays hard, but she also has to play smart knowing that they will need her out there on the court late in the fourth quarter. Melissa Rogers oh, has nah. her pass stolen by Silvermore. Two on one up the court. Jelani Jackson can't get the pass before it is knocked out of bounds by Marie Gaffney. That was beautiful anticipation. We had a good angle over here where we're sitting and she anticipated the pass, cut right in front like an interception. Defensive back took the pass. Rito, short jumper, good. And a timeout called by Arlington Catholic. Yeah, that was a well-earned shot by Brito. She's been having it tough. She's, she's, she's got a real battle underneath with, with number 50 for Arlington Catholic. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting matchup throughout this whole game because usually Aaliyah is one of the biggest girls on the court, and now she's not that big compared to number 50, so this should be interesting. Yeah, number 50 is Fogarty, and she's only a junior, that's so crazy. she'll be back next year. That, that is, is crazy. Very That's scary. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> One can only wonder what the matchup would have what would have been if the Sultan of SWAT, Tony Fairhurst, was in the game. She's yeah. the tallest member of the Brockton Boxers. Definitely, Matt. Uh, they it would be nice to see her out here and give um, Fogarty some some real some real comp out there. I mean, I, I'm not taking anything away from Brito, but Brito and um, Fairhurst are definitely a one-two punch for the Lady Boxers. The good news is that Tony Fairhurst is not wearing the brace on her knee. It looks like she will come back for the playoffs, which will be a definite added boost to this Brockton Boxers team. Johnny Jackson with the rebound, floats it up for Catherine Lewis. Lewis for Nadia Montero for the jumper, no good. Lewis gets the rebound, puts it up off the glass and in. That was a beautiful play because once she got the rebound, she did not put it on the floor. She just put it right back up and in. Easy shot, nice rebound, smart play. 16 to seven, the score, a minute 10 to go. Catherine Lewis comes up with the ball. She gives it to Brito. Brito puts it off the glass and in. Brockton double digit lead, 18 to seven. And the reason they're leading 18 to seven because of great defense that right backcourt violation. Arlington Catholic didn't know where they were on the floor. Yeah. I, I think what it is, yep, the Lady Boxers got uh, right at the moment, Arlington Catholic a little discombobulated with, with the Lady Boxers' great defense. Jelani Jackson to inbound to Catherine Lewis. Back to Jackson, under a minute to go. She goes cross court to Silvermore for three. No good. It's Nadia Montero with the hard fought rebound. Taken by Victoria Crandall. Come on, girls, get back in. Get back. Turn around. 
18 to nine, the score, Giannisha Silvermore to Jackson. Jackson for three, no good. The Cougars with the rebound, but oh. Rocky have comes up with those. a steal. Have to make those. Annalisa Fernandez came up with the steal. Brockton missed the easy bunny. 18 to nine now with 10 seconds to go. Arlington holding on for a last shot. Ball crossed with three seconds to go. She was wide open. And she hit the last second. She three. was wide open. Number five, Victoria Crandall with the last second three. 18 to 12 the score at the end of the first period. Again, that's a big time shot right at the buzzer. And that's what Al Arlington Catholic girls are gonna have to do to stay with these Lady Boxers at the moment because Lady Boxers are playing some hawkish defense. When Al Arlington Catholic, Catholic outside shooters has a sh chance to shoot that shot, they better shoot it um, because they can hit that shot. So um, I, I just like, for so far in this first quarter, I like the way the Lady Boxers are really hustling on defense. Definitely, but I think they kind of just fell apart in those last few seconds because that girl was wide open on the three and they know that she can take that shot. So I don't see why they should leave her open. I mean, it could have been confusion, but they definitely need to look out for that. Now the matchup shaping up to be Demiana Fogarty against Aliyah Brito down low. Fogarty, the tallest girls basketball player I think I've seen here at Staff Gymnasium <laughs> all season. Definitely. And Aliyah Brito, just the powerhouse in the paint. Also, the Lady Boxers have been taking advantage of that transition game they've been running. They've been pretty successful so far in that first quarter with their transition game. They need to keep that transition game going here in the second quarter. Again, to keep Fogarty out of that uh, half court offense. Oh, Fogarty got stuffed by Silvermore. No, I didn't oh. imagine myself saying that at the beginning of the night. Wow. Yeah, yeah Silvermore, she's a gritty defensive ball player. As Fogarty found out. Oh, oh, oh. Now Fogarty ran into Catherine Lewis. Lewis pulling up a little bit lame. And that's Fogarty's first foul. Fogarty called for something. She ran into her own player. And the other player took down Catherine Lewis. Natasha Lies back in the game. She gives it to Jelani Jackson. Jackson driving, kicks it, looking for Brito. Has her pass stolen by Crandall. Yeah, not a good pass right there in the paint. Too many um, blue shirts. Fogarty down low, up off the glass and in. Ooh. And Fogarty comes up with a steal. You guys know who Demiana Fogarty reminds me of? Who? Yeah, this might have been just before your time. The banner is hanging from the, the rafters Morgan here. Morgan Thatcher. At Morgan Staff Thatcher, Gymnasium, yep. it's Morgan Thatcher. Yeah. She's got the same build, looks like she could be a basketball, a uh, volleyball player. Yeah, definitely. That was a little before my, she was actually here a year before I was. She graduated the year I was coming in. But I definitely got to watch her play, which is definitely a big, big positive thing. But I mean, respect her a lot as an athlete. But she did just show that. She looked like Morgan Thatcher. Of course, Thatcher, the 2009-2010 Volleyball Player of the Year. Now the head volleyball coach over at Stonehill. Natasha Elias for three, short. You can, you can kind of get the sense that Brockton doesn't even want to try to go into the paint with Fogarty. Yeah. Yep, they've tried a number, a few times and haven't had a lot of success underneath. I kind of want to start a little wager amongst ourselves. Do we see Fogarty dunk before the end of the night? No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> Girls don't dunk in high school. I think she could. She probably could, but she won't. And I bet you her coach is against that. Giannisha Silvermore for three, no good. And the rebound taken down by Melissa Rogers. Alex! And Alexandra Ball didn't know the pass was coming her that, way, goes yeah, out of bounds. Yeah, a classic case of uh, two guards not communicating with each other. 
and that'll drive a coach crazy. Jelani Jackson down to Catherine Lewis. Lewis for three, no good. Montero gonna be called for an over the back. Right now, the Lady Boxers outside shot has gone cold in the last uh, three or four minutes. Still doing a good job rebounding and everything, but that outside shot is not working. And Brockton has not scored in the second quarter. They had the 18 to 12 lead going into, uh, 18 to uh, 10 lead rather, going into the first break. Now 18 to 14. Montero comes up with the steal to Jelani Jackson. Natasha Elias wide open. Kicks it back out to Jackson. Jackson for Montero. Montero down low for Elias who shoots a three. Good, nothing but net. That was a big shot for Elias. She needed that shot because the last few she's um, come up short. Again, good transition game for the boxes. Almost another backcourt violation on the Cougars. Leah Brito comes up with the steal. Oh, and just a little high. bit too much mustard looking for Jackson. You have to be careful with that. Yeah, she was pumped up. Coming down the court, fast break, three on one or three on two. She got a little bit too excited. Gaffney to Rogers. Rogers back to Gaffney. Gaffney for three, good. Yeah, just see Gaffney set it up nicely in the corner and took her shot. Montero for Elias to Jackson. Silver Moore getting ready to come back into the game. Elias wants the room to shoot with 15 on the shot clock. She gives it to Catherine Lewis. Jackson with the floater just short. Montero picks up the rebound off the glass, no good. Brought down by Fogarty. Annalisa Fernandez going to join Silver Moore as Arlington Catholic hits Thanks. another three. This one courtesy of Marie Gaffney. I think that's the second shot she's hit out there. Mm -hmm. From downtown. Jelani Jackson shoots it from way downtown, just short. Halfway through the second quarter, 21 to 20, Brockton on top, Arlington Catholic they have back to, with a vengeance. They have to cut off those threes. Have to. That's what's killing them right now. Jackson to Elias to Catherine Lewis. Lewis in for Brito. Brito's fouled. Oh. Counted in. One. What a shot. That was an excellent reaction by Brito. She got the pass. Didn't, again, didn't put the ball on the floor and just put it up with yep. a man on her. Very smart play to put it up with somebody on you. The ref should call a foul, and he did. Miana Fogarty coming over to the bench for what I'm sure will be a quick breather. Zalia Brito at the line to try to make it a three point play. She does just that. Call it the three the old fashioned way. Yeah, Brito, she's a good free throw shooter from the times I've seen her this year. She usually makes those free throws. She's not perfect, but I'd say she's about an 80% free throw shooter. Annalisa Fernandez into the game, replacing Aliyah Brito. And I'm sure Fernandez breathing a sigh of relief that, uh, relief that Fogarty is out of the game. Yeah, great defense over here by the Lady Boxers. They make uh, Arlington Catholic turn it over. Three and a half to go, Brockton up by four. So Moore holding now, driving baseline, kicks it to Fernandez and puts it up, no good. Offensive rebound. Jackson to Montero, back to Jackson. Over to Junaisha Silva Moore. Moore driving, puts up a funky shot. That was interesting. Had a lot of spin on it. A lot of offensive boards, now Catherine Lewis to Silva Moore. Moore to Jackson. Fresh shot clock. Jackson has her shot blocked. Now Junaisha Silva Moore thought for a three. Instead steps inside and hits it. That was good work by the boxers. Yeah, um, Silva Moore. Had the pressure on her, 
faked the first shot and made the defensive man commit himself and then took the shot and made it. You see, that ball movement definitely helped a lot. If you keep the ball moving and don't force any shots, you come out on top. Exactly. Another three hit by number 22, Melissa Rogers. Brockton's really going to start covering her on the outside. Silvermore to Lewis, over to Nadia Montero. Jackson pump fakes, gives it back to Montero, who gives it to Giannisha Silvermore. 2.15 to go, 10 on the shot clock. Catherine Lewis for three, no good. And Brockton comes up with the rebound. And the steal by Monica Royo. Three point edge. Rogers drove, put up a floater, no good. Brockton comes down with it. Silvermore. Uh. Yeah, she did kind of go in there. A little uncontrollable, the Arlington Catholic uh, Lady Cougar had her position, and um, I think the ref made the right call there. That's uh, Silver Moore's first foul of the day. Alexander Ball driving, puts up a one-handed layup, no good. Out of bounds off of Brockton. Pretty athletic move by the Lady Cougar. A little over the, over the hand under scoop shot. Rogers wide open for three, too long. Catherine Lewis comes down with it. Silva Moore to Catherine Lewis. Lewis from Montero to Elias. Here's that ball movement they need. They need to not force the shot. Play what they see. Catherine Lewis to Silva Moore for three. No good. And Ball comes down with the rebound. Fogarty and a travel called against Marie Gaffney. Good call. Very animated head coach of the Cougars. We get all the animated ones, Matt. I know, we really do. <laughs> Jen, this was right before you joined the crew here at Brockton Community Access. The Brighton coach. Oh BHS against Brighton. Right before Christmas. He, he, was, he was the most animated. I actually think I was here. He stands. You could probably hear him yelling. Yeah. All the way across the court. <laughs> and I think Arlington Catholic's head coach might put a hole in the floor by stomping. <laughs> Down low, and a foul committed by Giannisha Silvermore. Yeah, that'll be your second, I believe. I don't think I've ever seen a more quiet, angry man. <laughs> he's, he's almost whispering right now to Marie Gaffney, but you can tell the intensity and the anger in his voice. <laughs> 15 seconds to go in the half, 26-24 the score. Elias goes down, pops right back up. Yeah, Fogarty wasn't allowing that to go in there. So she just swatted it away. Good defense by the Lady Cougars. They're playing great defense inside, the Lady Cougars. Swanee Jackson to Catherine Lewis. Seven on the shot. Jackson way downtown, no good. Brockton gets the rebound, puts it up, no good. Three on the clock. A half court shot, Alexander Ball just wide to the right. And time expires on the first half. Brockton with a two-point edge going into halftime. 26 to 24 the score. This the second half might turn into a battle of the gunslingers. Yeah, I don't really know how I felt about that first half. I mean, I think 
both teams could have performed a little better. I mean, we have some girls on Arlington Catholic that are making very, very basic mistakes, something you do in almost like a U10 game, you know, traveling, backcourt, all those little things. But um, for Brockton, I think they need to watch out for the perimeter shots because Arlington Catholic, that's basically all they can do and use the height of number 50. So they definitely need to come out strong and look for those in the second half. Yeah, Brockton's transition game is, is pretty good. Their rebounding on both ends are, is, is very good. They're hustling hard. Again, like you said, Jen, the, the Achilles heel right now in that first half was covering Arlington Catholics, Cougars girls, um, the outside shot. They're just leaving them open, and they're hitting them. Yeah. As far as Brockton's outside shooting, they need to come in a little bit closer to that three-point line, especially Jackson. She needs to come in a little bit because she can hit that shot, but she's a little bit too far out when she's taking the shot. I think if she comes in a little bit more, she'll be definitely more successful. Jen, you mentioned the mental errors by both teams. None probably more um, than the backcourt violation committed by the Cougars. It was a really simple thing where Arlington Catholic just forgot where they were on the floor. Yes. Um, I think with that, I mean, it all depends on the game. Some days you're in it, some days you're not. And I think that's just one of those days for Arlington Catholic because they are a pretty good team. Yeah, they are. They, I mean, they're not 16 and five, I believe, for nothing. Or whatever their um, their record, they got a winning record. Like you said, they're ranked ninth. Brockton's ranked eighth. So Brockton has to be careful in this second half. Well, we're going to step aside and take a short break. The score at halftime, 26-24. The Brockton Boxers lead over the Arlington Catholic Cougars. We'll bring you second half action right after this. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back to Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Arlington Catholic Cougars and the Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partners Jen Happy Feet Caruso and Big Game Miles Jackson. Brockton coming into the second half with a two-point edge, 26 to 24 the score. Guys, an action-packed first half. It's going to be a battle of the three-point shooters as nobody wants to get in the paint with Leah Brito and Demiana Fogarty. Definitely, I don't blame them. I mean, coming into a high school game with that type of height, it's always hard to go around them. I mean, stay outside, do what you can do. Catherine Lewis to inbound for Brockton. She gives it long to Elias, who immediately shoots a three. Good. And that was from downtown. That's a statement to start a half. Definitely. Hopefully that'll be positive energy for um, those shooting uh, guards for Brockton. Ball to Royal over to Gaffney. Gaffney for three, no good. Almost a five second violation called on Melissa Rogers. Fogarty down low and a travel call. Good defense by the Lady Boxes. Jelani Jackson to inbound to Silva Moore. Silva Moore back to Jackson. Jackson thought about shooting it. Gives it back to Janisha Silva Moore. Back to Jackson. Pick set by Aliyah Brito. And now Genesha Silvermore from the baseline, no good. Followed a shot, but unable to get over Demiana Fogarty. Yeah, Fogarty was a nice job by um, Silvermore to follow her shot, but she was just um, overmatched by Fogarty. Ball for three, no good. Silvermore comes down with the rebound. Moore to Jackson, wide open to Elias. She's gonna shoot a three. And she goes off the glass and in, and a timeout called by Arlington Catholic. That was sweet, right off the glass that and was in. That's great. That's her second hit this uh, second half. She has all the points for the Brockton Boxers in this half. All, all the points on the board is only six points have been scored by the Brockton Boxers, none for Arlington Catholic. Natasha Elias heating up, doing Show, it fast. Showing her senior leadership here and on senior night. Definitely, and what better time to do it? Of course, four of the starting five 
boxers tonight graduating this year alongside you, Jen. Yes. Those are Gina Silva Moore, Natasha Elias, Catherine Lewis, and Aaliyah Brito. Yeah, and growing up, um, we actually, well, besides Natasha, we all went to the same middle school and played on the same basketball team. But with Natasha, we played on the same travel basketball team. So I've grown to know and love these girls, and they're just doing what they can do tonight, and I couldn't be more proud of them. And then, of course, the baby of the group, who is one of the leaders of the Brockton Boxers team, Jelani Jackson. Arlington Catholic ball, five minutes to go in the third quarter. 32 to 24, the score, Brockton on top. Ball, thought about shooting the three, instead goes inside and puts up the floater for two. Ooh, that was a nice fake and drive to the basket. Like you said, a little lollipop floater. Genesha Silvermore to Natasha Elias. Back to Silvermore, over to Jelani Jackson. 10 on the shot clock. Silvermore to Elias. Elias to Silvermore, now with seven. Silvermore stops, pops, no good. Fogarty comes down with it. Nice drive, just didn't go in. Rogers to ball now for Arlington Catholic. Back to Rogers. Rogers for three. Good. Interesting. The head coach of Arlington Catholic, anytime the Cougars put up a shot, he kind of leans back. <laughs> Catherine Lewis slings it to Silva Moore to Jelani Jackson. Jackson, no look pass back to Lewis. Seven on the shot clock. Silver Moore to Lewis. Lewis for three. Good. Big shot Two left by on Lewis. The shot clock. Big shot by the senior. Rockton now up by six again, 35 to 29. And they just about used the whole 30 second clock on that play. Gaffney now with the one handed floater. Good. And we have uh, a warning by the official for sportsmanlike. Exactly. Monica Royo either said something or flung the ball out of bounds after it came down. Yeah, it was more if she flung the ball away from the court. 35 31, the score. Rockton on top. Shoot it there, Monica. Shoot it. Jackson to Lewis. Lewis to Elias. Elias to Silvermore. Ball movement working for the Brockton Boxers. Now another eight on the shot clock. Captain Lewis for three, no good this time. Hit the rim, fresh shot clock. Brito comes down with the rebound, puts it up, no good. It's unlucky. This time Alexandra Ball comes down with it for the Cougars. Rogers for three, no good. Brito comes down with the rebound. Wow, wow she fought for that basketball. Great play by Brito. Elias for three. Good. Oh, oh God, she's on tonight. Well, she started heating up to begin the second half. Now she's at a full boil. Yep. And she can thank Miss Brito for that hustle on the defensive end. Brito Ooh. comes up with the steal. Loses it, gets it back to Jelani Jackson who uh, can't hold on to it. Aaliyah Brito coming up a little bit lame, favoring her right leg. Guys, let's talk about Aaliyah Brito. Last game, no braces, comes down with the knee injury. This game, she's wearing a brace on the right knee. Yeah, what happened there, she lost her eyeglass lens, I believe. That's what she we've was picking seen, up. We've seen that happen early yes, in the season. Exactly. Early on in the season, she lost it. She's such a hard competitor. She is. Gaffney had her shot tipped by Silva Moore, but it goes in anyway. Yeah, these guys are deadly for the um, Arlington Catholic team. 38-34, Silva Moore driving is foul. That was a great drive by Silva Moore. She, used, she wiggled in there with her body, and one of the Cougar, Lady Cougars, uh, made some contact, and it was, it was a nice, nice call by the referees. You know, like I've always said, these foul shots mean the most. 
And these are Brockton's first foul shots of the game. Well, so actually, well, first no, this oh, half, oh, Brito made yeah, a couple Brito. shots. Brito did make a couple. In that first half. But they haven't been on the line that much this game. Mainly because they kind of backed off on driving to the basket early on after a couple of shots were rejected. So they've been trying to um, win the ball game on the outside. Gaffney the ball to Rogers. Broken up by Nadia Montero. And the Cougars will retain possession. Nice job by the Lady Boxers keeping their hands up. Fogarty outside the perimeter. Now Melissa Rogers for Marie Gaffney back to Rogers. Fogarty Ooh. down low has her shot blocked, but a hard foul. I don't know foul. if I saw a foul there. I All heard, I heard I was ball. I heard ball, yeah. All I heard was ball. I think he called the foul because of such a, a the guard blocking a big six footer Please, shot yeah. and looked a little awkward so yeah. he's gonna <laughs> give her the courtesy foul. <laughs> you really can't be giving courtesy fouls here in the third quarter with 131. It's a close ball game. Yeah. You know, give um, guard credit. She made a great play, defensive play. Two top ten te teams. There shouldn't be any courtesy fouls regardless. Yeah. Lewis comes up with the ball. Jackson to Lewis, Lewis for three, no good. And the official rule, it hit the top of the backboard out of bounds off Brockton. Arlington Catholic, maybe a foot away from committing another backcourt. Ball backhands it to Rogers for three, no Ooh. good. Jelani Jackson out to Elias, wide open for three. Good! Again. In the, the words of our own newbie Rateau and or Beyonce, this girl is on fire. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Natasha's hanging out downtown this second half, big time. Inside for Fogarty, has her shot tipped. Nadia Montero comes down with it. 35 seconds to go, 43 to 35 the score. Silvermore out to Jackson for Elias for three. Uh, no good. She's off. This place might have lost it if yes, she hit yeah, another one. Yeah, I was ready to erupt. 20 seconds to go. About a .2 second difference between shot clock and game clock. Gaffney with the floater, good. Next too easy. Shot clock off, 10 to go. Brockton's got plenty of time to get the last shot. Silvermore slowing it down to Catherine Lewis. Lewis back to Silvermore. Silvermore for three. Ah, no good. Okay. And the buzzer sounds. End of the third quarter, 43 to 37. The score, Brockton on top. Natasha Elias is hot. She is. I've seen it all game. Hit a couple of quick threes to start this second half. Only missed one since. And Arlington Catholic just trying to keep up with her right now. I thought Brockton did a pretty good job um, keeping the outside shooters from um, Arlington Catholic hitting a lot of shots. I think they hit might have might hit one, possibly two, but they did a good job collapsing on those outside shooters, and they're going to have to do it again here in the fourth quarter. You can ill afford to let them them uh, outside shooters, and there's about three of them that can hit that shot, so they've got to be careful. Well, eight minutes left on the clock in Brockton's regular season finale. They lead Arlington Catholic 43 to 37. This game might very well go to overtime. I'm gonna compare it to Duke UNC, the game from last week, the uh, Battle of Tobacco Road. And Miles, a name you brought up way early in the season, I don't know if you remember this, you compared one of the men's players to Jerry Stackhouse. Yes. And he gave an interview with ESPN talking about big rivalries Two top seeded teams in the state, eight versus nine. A possible championship matchup if anybody can get past Braintree in the south. This this might be the high school edition of Duke UNC in a couple of years. Yes, indeed. 
Ooh. Missed shot Missed number 21, Lena Perez. Missed the easy bunny. A little bit too much mustard on the pass. Jackson couldn't handle it. She gets That's it. That shot. Out of bounds. Yeah, Brockton ball. You heard it right out of the head coach of the Arlington Catholic Cougars. Yeah, nice Gabby hustle Brockton's by. Ball. Nice hustle by Silva Moore. Jackson thought about a shot. Instead gives it to Genesha Silvermore. Her pass blocked. <laughs> Catherine Lewis comes up with the steal. Ooh. Bodies flying everywhere. Couple of players down. And a foul called against Alexandra Ball. Nice. She's throwing the body around tonight. Yes, she had nice defensive anticipation by Lewis. Silvermore thought about a shot. Catherine Lewis wide open on the other go, side. Justin. Inside for Brito. No, no, Back out to Lewis. Lena, Lewis for right three. Off. No good. Lena. Offensive Lena. foul. Elias no yeah, called for a two-handed push. That's her third personal. Yep, Lady Box is really playing tough defense. Even the guards are pushing people around. Now, Jen, I have a question for you. This is the last quarter of Brockton Box's regular season. Does a thought creep into the back of these ladies' heads that they've wrapped up a playoff spot, they, they really don't need to do anything? Um... You know, it probably does cross their mind at least once, but I mean, they need they need to go out with a bang. So I feel like right now they're just focused on winning, focused on getting that W tonight and playing their hearts out because this is the last regular season game as a part of the Brockton Boxers women's basketball team. And especially for these seniors, quite possibly the last time they're playing at home here in front of their home fans at Staff Gymnasium. That that's big. Does it does it cross the mind that either yeah we've we've wrapped up a playoff spot or is it even possible that they try too hard to put on a show? Um yeah to be honest I mean they definitely know they have that playoff spot in hand but they've had it for how long now? At least since the last New Bedford game, 71 to 20 yeah. victory over the Whalers. Yeah, so I don't I don't really know if that's what they're thinking about right now. Forwardy down low, spins off the side of the backboard, gets her own rebound by virtue of being like nine feet tall. Rogers for three, good. And Lady Cougars a deadly outside. Just deadly. Silver Moore. Driving inside. Slips the ball out to Jackson, who puts up a floater, no good. Marie Gaffney stops. Gives it to Ball, Ball Ooh. for three, no good. Fogarty on the rebound, no good. Montero calls for the push against Demiana Fogarty. Lena Perez coming out of the game. Lady Boxes need to make a stop here. Wide open. Rogers for three, no good. Fogarty comes down with it. Gaffney now for three, no good. See, they but she is fouled by Jelani Jackson. They shouldn't have that much time on the perimeter. Exactly. We're gonna see a timeout called after. I don't know if, if I was the coach for Brockton, I would be torn apart as far as should I go to a man to man because these guards, you know, Brockton Lady Boxes are um, collapsing on whoever has the ball, but when they collapse on that person, she gets it over to the open guard or open forward and, and most of them can shoot that outside shot, and they're, they're open with an outside shot. So 
I'd be torn about thinking about a man-to-man -man defense, but um, I'm not the coach. You go man-to-man, -man, I don't think there's a person on this half of the Mississippi River that can cover Demiana Fogarty. Well, you know what, the thing about Demiana, <laughs> she's tall, but as far, she, if you get it to her inside, she can be tough. But I, I think Brito has the ability, the weight and the ability, at least to kind of keep her outside, sort of. I, I don't know. It, it, that's just a, my thought as far as man to man goes. It could backfire. Who knows? But right now, that zone just isn't working. Jen, pull your cell phone out. <laughs> call Aaron Montero. Get him down here. <laughs> tell him to bring his jersey. <laughs> he might be the only person in Brockton that can cover Fogarty. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> 43 to 40 the score. Marie Gaffney at the line for three shots, trying to tie the game. This is her first attempt. And we saw her practicing free throws at halftime. Not something we, we see very often, players practicing free throws. One of two now, Gaffney for her third attempt. Good, two for three at the line is Marie Gaffney. 43 to 42 the score, five and a half minutes to go. Catherine Lewis across the court to Giannisha Silvermore. More to Montero, Montero back to Silvermore. To Jelani Jackson, seven on the shot clock. Jackson's gonna put it up. She does just that, has her shot blocked. The last second shot, but the buzzer sounds a 30 second violation against the Brockton Boxers. Ladies, Box is not quite sure after those last five seconds ticked off what to do with that basketball. Gaffney, right in front of us, throws it up. Blocked by it. Brito. I think that's that volleyball in her. <laughs> I think she was a little surprised that it was right there in her hands and she was just trying to keep her hands up and block the, the pass inward. I think she's channeling her inner Tony Fairhurst. <laughs> nice defensive play by the boxes. Jackson to Silva Moore. Moore puts up a shot and a travel called against Brockton. Natasha Elias back in the game for Nadia Montero. She's gonna be very, very careful with three personal fouls. Yeah, um, they get five, 442 on the clock. She can be aggressive, but she has to be smart too. Alexandra Ball. To Melissa Rogers inside for Fogarty who spins, drives, puts it up, no good. Gets her own rebound, being assaulted by two Brockton boxes and she throws it out of bounds off the foot of Aaliyah Brito. Nice defense by the Lady Boxes, give them credit. Alexander Ball. To Melissa Rogers, Rogers Brings it out of bounds. Oh, come on, it went off the, now. We had a perfect trajectory on that. Yeah. It changed direction three times. Silvermore did touch it, but then the um, Lady Cougar touched it too, and she's back court, and they missed it. Are you serious? They missed it. These officials are slipping. That's another back court. Are you gonna call this one? Referees made two, missed two calls. And then instead of getting the backcourt and having Brockton inbound at, at center court, the Cougars let it go out of bounds. Catherine Lewis out to Silvermore for three. No good. Damian uh, Fogarty with the rebound. Alexandra Ball. Bolts it out to Melissa Rogers. Montero gonna come back into the game for Brockton. Rogers with the floater, no good. 
Fogarty comes down with it, kicks it out to Alexandra Ball. Ball with a one-handed hook shot, good and one. I don't know about that call. Brito was just standing there with her arms up and the ball player ran into her. These refs are missing a lot. And it's tough that they're really starting to mess up here in the fourth quarter yeah, when it really not counts. Ideal. It's not ideal at all. And this is no small game either. Exactly. I understand if, if Brockton was winning 70 to 20, maybe a few missed calls, quick speeding the game a little bit. 44 <laughs> to 43, Arlington Catholic on top in the last game of the regular season. Oh, what? That's a charge. That, I don't know what that was. Montero called for the hit. And Alexandra Ball at the line for two shots. Ball makes her first attempt. Two point edge for the Cougars. Ball goes two for two at the line. Three point ball game. Arlington Catholic on top. Kwani Jackson to Elias. To Silvermore. Silvermore to Elias. Jackson. Back to Elias to tie the game. No good. Arlington Catholic comes down with it. Three minutes to go. And a three point edge for the Cougars. Foul called against Catherine Lewis. Didn't see it. I didn't see it either. And where the guard was using her, her elbow, you would think the referee would account for that and let it go. There wasn't much contact that Lewis made, so very frustrating for the Lady Boxers at the moment. Yeah. That's the new rule, the arm bar. Monica Royo back into the game. She replaces Lena Perez. Meanwhile, Melissa Rogers at the line. 47 to 43. Arlington Catholic running away with this thing strictly based on missed calls and free throws. Catherine Lewis to Elias. Broken up by the Cougars. Ball to Gaffney, Gaffney back to Ball. Ball hands it to Rogers. Back to Gaffney, back to Rogers. Two and a half to go. Arlington Catholic unable to move it inside. Now Royo has it. She gets it back to Gaffney. Fogarty down low. No way to give it. And a timeout called by Arlington Catholic. Two seconds on the shot clock when we come back from this timeout. And two minutes and 12 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. 48 to 43. Arlington Catholic up by five. They're gonna roll 28 seconds on the shot clock instead of the two that we saw. Okay, Lady Box is gonna have to buckle, um, buckle down here and um, play some good defense, get the ball back and quickly bring it down court and try to get a quick two. Again, they, they need a transition game right now because um, Fogarty is just um, too much of a, um, Distraction right there in the middle of the paint. They need to try to get down and uh, get something easy real quick. Yeah, it's the it's the easy shots that mean the most. I mean, I, I sound kind of repetitive here, but I mean, there's not much else to. Right, to and, and they don't have yeah. the luxury of moving the ball around the horn. There's only two minutes and 12 yeah, seconds exactly. left, so they got to do something quickly. Exactly. I'll tell you, Brockton really misses Tony Fairhurst right about now. Yeah, and I see Tony over there in the huddle. Um, supporting her team, but she, I can tell from her face she's very disappointed and really wants to be in this ball game, in which any true athlete would want a competitor would want to be in here. And again, hopefully, Matt, that uh, we'll see her, like you said, hopefully we'll see her in the playoffs. The good news for Fairhurst is she's only a junior, so she's not missing her 
senior night celebration here tonight. Gaffney to Ball. Ball hands it to Rogers. Offensive foul called against Arlington Catholic. Yeah, that was a good call. It was a well blocking needed. foul. Yeah, well blocking foul. Royal called for the push. Brockton in foul trouble. Arlington Catholic in a bonus situation. One and one from now on. Jackson driving the basket. Puts it up and in. Nice little lollipop shot by Jackson. She did that early on in this ball game. She's been quiet ever since, but nice, nice job. Brockton now full court press, man to man. Oh, foul. And a foul called against Giannisha Silvermore. What? Armbar. I didn't see it. No, if anything, it was the with the it was the ball carrier throwing the elbow or arm check. Unbelievable. I think with this new rules, the referees still need to learn what it means. Yeah. Exactly. They're going heavy on the armbar calls tonight. On the Lady Fox. Little to side. no contact. Ball hits her first attempt. She will get a second. Four point edge for the Cougars. Yeah, Lady Box is getting the short end of the stick on this um, new call, call. Ball two for two. Free toe to Giannisha Silvermore. A minute and a half to go. Brockton down by five. Jelani Jackson to Brito. Brito to Silvermore. Moore driving, stuffed by Fogarty. Good defense. And she's limping. Janisha Silvermore favoring her right leg. Fogarty, good pass to Gaffney, who puts it up and in. That was a serious uh, defensive breakdown there by Silvermore. Foul called against Melissa Rogers for a block. They're going to say before the shot. Uh, and the referee is going to um, have a conference. It looked like it was she was shooting the ball, but yeah, two shots. Good, good call by the um, that referees. Was a good call. Yeah. They got together, figured it out, and made the right call. And uh, very animated. We're going to have a little discussion over on the Arlington Catholic bench. The coach is saying the person that called the foul called it outside before the shot. And the other official called it for two shots. And I like how the official blew the whistle, held up the play, and came over and explained to the coach for Arlington Catholic um, how it's going down. And, uh, the crowd here at Staff Gymnasium yelling at the officials. Some things we cannot repeat on television. Jelani Jackson hits her first attempt. It's a big shot with 102 on the clock. Montero in the game for Giannisha Silvermore. Probably for the best. Brockton already wrapped up their playoff spot. Silvermore came up a little bit limp. Jackson two for two at the line. One minute to go, five point ball game. You know, I think they can get this, but they're gonna have to work hard. That was not very no foul. No foul there. Off of no foul there. Now, the referees definitely missed yeah. a call there. Makeup uh, call. I don't know. It, it, it was close. It looked like it, they could have called the foul. I, I would not argue. I don't know. But great defense by the Lady Boxes. Great defense. And the crowd is alive and well here at Staff Gymnasium. Jackson puts it up. Oh, no, no. They got to the play smarter than that. That's not a foul. No, that's not a foul. The oh. guard initiated the contact. Jackson calls for the arm bar. But that was, you saw it. If we have instant replay, you'll see it at home. The guard made the contact by put, throwing the arm out. Unbelievable. These, these refs don't know the rules. They don't. Melissa Rogers at the line for two shots, hits her first. I tell you what, these Lady Cougars are excellent free throw shooters. 
And like you said, they, uh, they were taking free throws at halftime. So obviously it's paying off for the Lady Cougars. A timeout called by Brockton. Six point edge for the Cougars, under a minute to go. 49 seconds, 53 to 47 the score. Let's take this brief break in action to thank the crew for tonight's festivities down in the truck. We have the one and only award-winning director and producer, Paul Mandeville, we're in not the house. We're not worthy, we're not worthy. <laughs> we also, in the truck on instant replay, Mike the Postman Simmons, another delivery to the viewers of the city of Brockton. Aaron Tebow, also helping down in the truck. On cameras, we have Eric Helberg, Konya Vyoyo, and Rob Curry. Of course, bringing you all the action from courtside. Big game, Miles Jackson, Jen, Happy Feet Caruso, and myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. Miles, how about a birthday shout out? Two. Your son? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, today's my dad's birthday. Oh. Really? Yeah. Happy birthday to your dad. <laughs> Me and your dad are Pisces. My birthday's Sunday. Really? They're not really making your dad work on his birthday, yeah, are they? Yeah, they are. Of course <laughs> they are. Rogers misses her second attempt. Six point ball game. Jelani Jackson to Silvermore. Need a shot. Need a shot. Elias to Jackson. There Jackson for three. Oh, no good. No good. Brockton gets the rebound. Smart and play Catherine by Lewis um, Yes, nice play. She got the rebound and just put it right back up. Didn't put the ball on the floor. They're not oh. seriously going to rule that she wasn't in a shooting motion. It looked like she was shooting. They must have called it just as she got, I, I don't know. I don't even know what rule book these refs are, are reading tonight. Jackson with the floater off the glass, no good. Was she not shooting there? She was definitely shooting. That would have been a big shot if she could have made that. Chance for a three-point play, but she didn't. So it'll be a two-point um, shot attempt. Fogarty called for the push. Jelani Jackson misses her first Ugh. attempt. Couple of bounces off the rim. Jackson hits her second attempt, one of two. Five point ball game, 30 seconds to go. Hold called against Jelani Jackson. Now she's got three personal fouls. Arlington Catholic now in a double bonus situation with 10 fouls against Brockton. Rogers hits her first attempt. Lena Perez into the game, replacing Monica Royo. Rogers makes it a three possession game. Catherine Lewis long for Jelani Jackson. 27 seconds to go. Aliyah Brito. Giannisha Silvermore to Jackson. Jackson for three. In and out. Already comes down with the rebound. Rogers. There had to be a foul in there yeah, somewhere. I, I saw a lot. Is that a foul? Roger uh, Alexander Ball can barely put any weight on her right foot. You gotta take her out of the game. If you're the if, if you're the coach, but she's been and you shooting see the free her throws. She can't put any weight on her right leg. Interesting. These refs are starting to make this a safety hazard. Ball misses her Ten first attempt. 10.6 to go, Brockton down by seven points. Ball. 0 for 2 at the line. Got to think her ankle had something to do with that. Yeah. Jackson to Silva Moore. Moore with a quick three. No good. And Fogarty comes down with the rebound. A travel called against Arlington Catholic. 1.7 seconds to go. Ball 
ball, limps off the court, favoring her right leg. Lewis to Silvermore, Moore, last second shot, too long. And for the second time this season, Brockton falls to the Cougars of Arlington Catholic High, this time by a score of 55 to 48. It was a very good game early, and in the end, just too many mental errors for the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, very hard fart game by both the Lady Cougars and the Lady Boxers. I hate to say it, but I think the turning point in that ball game was when the referee, the referee. missed two calls, backcourt, and then um, a ball off the um, Arlington Catholic ball Lady um, Cougars' hands, and that was within a 30-second span, and that's when they find, uh, the Lady Cougars turned the um, game around, and they took the lead. And Brockton never quite recovered after those um, um, shady no calls. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I definitely agree with you. The referees definitely had a big part in the outcome of this game. And I don't usually like um, blaming the refs, but that was definitely the turn point in this game. And, I mean, the boxers are also to blame, too, because they shouldn't have let that get to them. Exactly. So, I mean, it could go both ways. Jen, have you ever heard of an arm bar before tonight? Um, I've actually heard about it when Catherine Lewis was actually talking to me about it in AP Bio, but she didn't exactly know what exactly it was either. I mean, nobody's really sure as to what those rules actually mean, and I think they need to clear that up before they go into the tournament. Well, i tell you, I'm really proud of our Lady Boxers this year, proud of our seniors. Definitely. They did a good effort. I feel good about the Lady Boxers going into the MIAA uh, tournament. Definitely done. They played great defense tonight. Some tough calls, but I think they can look at the positive and feel that they have a chance to go deep into the playoffs. Well, Brockton unable to get the win over Arlington Catholic here at Staff Gymnasium on senior night. They most likely will not have a home playoff game in the MIAA South Sectional Tournament. The final score, again, 55-48. to 48. The Arlington Catholic Cougars get the best of the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partners, Big Game Miles, Jackson, Jen, Happy Feet, Crusoe, I'm Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. We will see you in the playoffs.